Good morning, family. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Blessed Wednesday because Grammy is having a wonderful Blessed Wednesday, and I am so glad to be here with you for this encouragement, this day of encouragement. Today is going to be a little bit different than what Grammy normally talks about. Normally, I try to bring an uplifting, encouraging message, but today I want to talk to you guys about something. On my, I'm not a political person. I try not to get involved in politics. I try to keep my opinions to myself and pray for those who are in office. Vote the way that I think is a godly way to vote. Do what I'm supposed to do as far according to the Father in heaven and not the say of the world. <laughs> but I noticed that a lot of people were going back and forth about the performance of the Super Bowl. So this is what I want to say. I, I, I prayed and I talked to God and yesterday as we were talking, sometimes God will just begin to put stuff in my spirit as I'm walking. The Holy Spirit will minister to me as I'm pondering on stuff and thinking. And this is what came to me. The devil is an imitator of God. He's an imitator of God. Every time we have a holy holiday, there's another worldly ho holiday that is thrown in there with it. We have the birth of Jesus. We have Santa Claus. We have the Resurrection Sunday. We have Easter with bunnies that lay eggs. He is a complete imitator. He gave us music to praise him, to sing praises to him, dances to lift up our hands and praise unto the Father. And then, you know, so music has been tainted. And please, when I say this, if you like a certain artist and you like to listen to secular music, just hear me out. Hear me out to the very end. Okay, in 2 Corinthians, it says, 2 and 11, it says, Least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We have to not be ignorant. We have to keep our eyes open. We have to know what is right, what is wrong, what is sin, and what is not sin. Okay, and in Ephesians 6, 11, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. John 10, 10 through 11 says, The thief cometh not but, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, says Jesus. And the shepherd gives his life for his sheep. I wanted to get some scripture in there this morning because I'm going to talk about some things in detail. When you are a Christian and you are a godly person and you love the Lord, I know, I'm just going to tell you, I got saved at nine years old, but I didn't grasp a hold of it until probably the last five years of my life of what Jesus really is, what the Holy Spirit really is, what God really is. I thought I got saved, I go to church, I sing a couple hymns, I listen to the preacher preach his sermon, and I go home about my week and I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'll say a little prayer at night, ask him to forgive me, but I still would get up every day, get in conversations I shouldn't have got into, tell vulgar jokes if that's what it was, what I thought would get a laugh. I did not walk a godly path like I was supposed to. Here's what's happened over the years. We have been fed this much and this much and this much and this much of sin, and then the world has conformed it to be normal and normal and normal. And so now when we see sin, we are not able to distinguish that it's sin. Now, if you've got people up there and they are singing illicit ver uh, lyrics and they're gyrating all over the place, is that godly? Everything we do should edify the Lord. Everything. Whether it be singing, dancing, praising, preaching, working at the supermarket, working at the library, taking care of children, whatever it is, being a nurse, we should be edifying the Lord in all things. That is what we are called to do. From the time we are born to the time that we go back to the Lord, it's what we've done for Him. So I'm going to say we should hunger for all the things of God. We have become so accustomed to sin, we are not able to distinguish between right and wrong any longer. Not any longer. And I notice that so a lot of my friends will say, well, praise the Lord. The Lord just helped me do this today. And then in the next minute, they are the F-bomb, the F-bomb, and the F-bomb. Come out. We are different. We come out from amongst that. We do not live in that squalor. Does not mean you're going to be perfect. But we do not walk in sin. We do not sin on purpose. 
And let me tell you, as soon as I start sinning, the Holy Spirit will start rumbling on the inside of me. You can ask my husband. I'll start to say something, and then all of a sudden I go, oh, oh, mm, 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 mm. yes, Lord. Mm. Nope, can't talk about that. <laughs> he will get me quick. So, Jesus says you cannot have two masters. You cannot serve two masters. You will love the one or hate the other. I want to tell you, there is no middle ground. There are two forces in this earth, and there is a God force, and there is a devil force. You are either one or the other. You might be the best person I have ever met in my life, but if you have not surrendered to God, and you are not walking that path, then you are not heaven bound. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Those who love Jesus and have received him as their Lord and Savior and live for him are the ones that are going to heaven. Those who re refuse to have him, do not take him in their heart, they are headed on the other path. Two paths. One is straight and narrow. One is wide. I'm on the straight and narrow. Okay? It just bothers me. I know that I'm kind of saying this forcibly, but it really bothered me that a lot of these people that I know are godly people cannot distinguish between right and wrong anymore. We have come to a place where we have gotten so fed with this stuff that we're like, oh, it was a wonderful performance. They did wonderful because they don't want to offend anybody. Just let me tell you something. You are my brother and sister, whether you're black, yellow, brown, red, or white. This word is for everybody. We are to serve God in the same way, holy and upright before him. Holy and upright before him. If you have Jesus in your heart, you have him in your body, you have him in your mind, you have him in your soul. Jesus is our best friend. He's just not wanting that three hymns and that sermon on Sunday morning. He's wanting a full relationship with you. He's your best friend. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I want to say is good morning, Father. When I go to bed at night, the last thing I want to say is good night, Father. I love you. Thank you for a beautiful day. Those who love him, hunger after him. They seek him. They search for the things that are of him, not the things of the world. Now, I'm not telling you not to listen to secular music. I'm not telling you that you can't dance, that you can't do this. I'm not your judge and I'm not your convictor. But I'm telling you, those who serve Christ have their eyes open. We are able to distinguish between sin and godliness. I almost like to say it's almost like Star Wars. You got the two forces. One force is for God. It's the nice pure light. It's the good light. It's the peaceful path. It's the road to righteousness. Then you got the other one and it's the road to destruction. You know, I love everybody, but I want us to be wise. I want us to have a godly mind and a godly heart. So when you see sin, you call it what it is. It is sin. It's horrible. There were children all over the world that watched that. There were children that have been watching a lot of things for a long time. You can't even watch a music video. You can't watch a music video. They're full of sex, drugs, destruction, horrible language. I'm not a prude. I love to have fun. I love to joke. I love to laugh. But I'm a godly person. So therefore, I am convicted when I watch that stuff. Am I perfect? No. I have to repent every day. But let's get our eyes open. Let's have our heart open to the things that are of God. Let me make sure I got me some notes here. I got a lot of notes from what the Holy Spirit was talking to me yesterday. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, and the old one has gone. The new is here. And I wrote this down because I have some people that think that they can get drunk on Friday and Saturday night and party like the devil and go to church on Sunday, and they okay. And then repeat it the next week and repeat it the next week. Those who love the Lord follow the Lord. They serve him. And they love this book right here from the beginning to the end of it. He didn't die on a cross and give his life so that you could lay out drunk and go to church on Sunday. He died on the cross so he could be your friend so that you could have a relationship with you. That's why he died. So that you could live upright and pure before the Father so that you could go to the Father. So you didn't have to go down in the caverns to Abraham's bosom and never be with the Father. 
You need to get in the Word. You're not shielded up in your armor. You don't have your sword, which is the Word. You don't have your shield. You don't have your shoes. You don't have your helmet. You don't have anything. And you're unable to fight away the wiles of the devil. And he will steal, he will kill, and he will destroy. Because that's what he's here to do. Like I said, this is a whole different message than usually what I pre what I talk about. I'm not a preacher. I want to change that word. But I don't want you to die and go to hell. I don't want you to die and go to hell and be, be blind. I was accused a couple weeks ago of being a sugary, she didn't use that word, but a sugary teacher. That I wasn't teaching about sin. But I don't do that. I try to do every week what God has laid in my heart to do. Every week, whatever God has laid in my heart. I try to let the Holy Spirit speak. But this week, I was troubled. So this is what came out this week. Next week, we might be doing, yeah, all right, high fives. God is good. But this week, we have to be careful. Let's do a heart check. Let's repent. Let's read that word because that word changes who we are. The word is Jesus. And when you put that word in you, you get more of Jesus. But anyway, I love you guys. I love you with all my heart. I'm not here to be mean. I'm just saying there is a lot of sin right now. And if we're not careful, we will baby it. We will put it on our shoulder, pat it on the back, and we'll walk ourselves right into hell. Because God don't send nobody to hell. We do it ourselves. Anyway, I love you guys. If you need prayer, if you need prayer, if you have something that you need to talk to me about, hit me an email at grammynana72 at gmail.com. We will pray. We will pray. I will pray for you on there, and then I will pray for you every day. I will call it out, and we will get through it. Pray for me. I'm trying to overcome the sin of overeating. Like I said, I'm not perfect. I am not perfect, and God's not calling for perfect people. He's just calling for people who are willing to love him and stand against sin, against the devil. I love you. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed day. You can also, I forgot to say, you can also send me a letter at Grandma Nene, P.O. Box 575, Corning, Arkansas, 72422. I'll have it in the description. Anyway, I love you. God bless you. I'm praying for you. Until next time, I'm Grammy Nene.